Hello Performance Ninja and welcome to the Loop Interchange 1 lab assignment. Today we will practice improving performance of a program by changing its memory access pattern. This lab assignment could be quite simple for most of you, but it would be an important step in preparation for the next one, which is more difficult. Ok, so to begin with, let's quickly talk about what is loop interchange. Let's consider this simple example of a two perfectly nested loops. Notice that the innermost loop does strided accesses to elements of A, B and C, meaning that we access every nth element. For example, we access element number 0, then n, then 2n, 3n, and so forth, which is not cache friendly. Loop interchange is the process of exchanging the loop order of nested loops. The main goal of loop interchange is to change memory access pattern of the loop nest. It is as simple as just swapping two lines, but what a difference it can make. Here we show an example of interchanging nested loops for i and j. And with this change, we enable sequential memory accesses, which will make our code more cache friendly and it will run much faster. Loop interchange is easy to make if the loops are perfectly nested. However, if they are not, it can be quite challenging. But we will consider it in the next lab assignment. So now let's go to the code of the lab assignment and see what type of bottleneck we are dealing with. I built the benchmark and now let's run the top-down performance analysis on the program. If you have never heard of top-down before, I suggest you to go to section 6.1 of my book where I describe it in more details. So we see that our application is bound by the CPU backend, but now let's dig one level deeper. And now we see that our application is actually bound both by memory and compute. Well, we will actually stop here since it's enough for us right now to know that our application is bound by memory. You can always dig further yourself if you want to. But before going further, we need to do one thing. Lab assignments are built on top of Google Benchmark Library, which by default performs a variable number of benchmark iterations. That actually makes it hard to compare performance profiles of two runs since they will not do the same amount of work. So you can see roughly the same wall time even though the number of iterations is different. To fix the number of iterations, you can do the following change. This will instruct the Google Benchmark Framework to execute exactly 10 iterations of the benchmark and now you can compare elapsed time since you always will have the same amount of work done. Since this is a more or less simple task, I will take this chance to introduce Intel Advisor tool. You don't have to use it, but I think this tool is very powerful and can provide many performance insights about your program. You can skip the rest of the video if you are already familiar with the tool. I already created the project for this lab assignment, so let's run the survey analysis. It may take a while to collect all the needed data. And let's take a look at the summary tab first. It actually shows a lot of interesting statistics about our program, like elapsed time, like which vector instruction set was used, number of CPU threads. And it also shows that 72% of the executed code was scalar and 26% of the code was vector. And we will come back to that later. This summary tab also shows the top time consuming loops. And this is actually where things already start getting interesting. So you see we have the same loop on the same source line that appears twice in the hotspot. Well, how can that happen? I actually checked what happened there and it turns out that there is a function called multiply that get, get called twice from the function called power, both of those function calls were inline, but one of those calls was also vectorized by the compiler. 
So you see, this is how we ended up with two different versions of the same loop. But I should point out that this was not the most efficient vectorization performed by the compiler since there are still a lot of gather and scatter operations which have their own penalty. Anyway, we will talk more about that in a dedicated lab assignment for vectorization. So now, actually, let's go and collect the roof line. Again, it may take a while to collect all the data. Now, let's take a look at the survey and roofline tab. And first of all, the tool shows us the breakdown by each function and loop in the program. It also shows the type of the code, whether it was scalar or vector. Notice that the tool already points us that there was a possible inefficient memory access pattern in both of the two hot loops in the program. So this source view at the bottom also shows the corresponding source code for this loop. And as I said earlier, right, we have two versions of the same loop, one scalar and one vector. And actually, both of those versions were also unrolled by the compiler. Personally, I also find this code analytics tab very interesting. So it shows the instruction mix for our scalar loop, it was 53% of instructions were loads and stores, and only 11% were actual compute instructions. And actually, percentage of the compute instructions for the vector version of the loop is even less. It's only 5%. Now, let's actually go back to the scalar version, and let's take a look at the another interesting thing, which is trip counts. So the trip count is the number of times the loop body was executed. And for the scalar version, we actually know that the number of iterations should be 400. Well, this is because this constant n is equal to 400. But the tool actually shows us 80. So is, is, is the tool wrong? Well, no, it's actually because the, the loop was unrolled five times and five multiplied by 80 is equal to 400. So everything matches here. And this information about trip counts is especially useful when we can tell how many times the loop body was executed just by looking at the source code. Now let's take a look at the roofline itself. If you are not aware about roofline performance model, I encourage you to go and read section 5.5 .5 of my book where I explain how it works. Basically, on this chart, we have horizontal and so slope lines that indicate theoretical maximum performance of the hardware. So horizontal lines indicate maximum compute performance and those inclined lines indicate maximum performance of the memory hierarchy. And also we have this red dot that indicates the performance of the scalar version of the loop and the smaller yellow dot that indicates the performance of the vectorized version of the loop. So the goal here is to move our dots up closer to the roof lines. So we can see that our scalar loop underperforms badly. It is below the scalar floating point peak computing power of the machine, and we are even not at the DRAM bandwidth level. So the second loop actually performs a little bit better than that, but still not optimal. So now let's actually check what recommendations Intel Advisor tool can give us. As we said earlier, the tool detected possible inefficient memory access pattern and it suggests us to run a memory access pattern analysis. So let's do this. Okay, so this is how the memory access patterns report looks like. And if I click on this loop, I will be able to see its source code along with the corresponding assembly instructions. The most important information here for us is the stride with which memory locations are accessed. If we go down to the assembly level, we could see that one of the memory instructions has a constant stride of 2000. Well, this is because the loop is unrolled by a factor of five. And if we multiply five by 400, this equals to 2000. So you can clearly see we are far from performing sequential memory accesses. And I'm not telling you access to which matrix this is, since it will be your job to go and fix the code. For this simple example, it is possible to spot the problem 
just by examining the code as we did in the beginning of this video. But it can be not so easy for every application. And now I invite you to start working on the code for this lab assignment.